Good morning and welcome to Pran Banan Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to Pram Banan Temple. Now this is one of the highlights of any trip that you're going to take to Jogfa. Isn't it beautiful? I've got a beautiful clear day as well, which is getting a bit toasty hot, but it's lovely to show you some nice photos of this beautiful place. It is also quite busy and I've just managed to find a quiet corner in one of the side temples. There is so much to see here. Built in the 9th century, it has seen a lot of history. Uh, it's been destroyed by earthquakes, pillaged by the Dutch, forgotten for years, rediscovered by the British, pillaged again, and lately has been restored. A lot of it has been restored. I think there's something like 2,400 various temples here, of which only 20 and 30 have been restored to their original grandeur. In the main com complex of Prambanan, there's three big temple setups which we're going to explore today. This is the main one, the big one in the center. And there's two others that we're going to take a walk around and see. Let me show you this little section here while I tell you a bit about the history. Okay, we have arrived at Pram Banang, and here's the entrance. Look at his ticket. And there's domestic, so let me just show you here, go through here. So if you're local, if you're an Indonesian, you go that way, foreigner, that way. Uh, let's go this way since I am a visitor, foreigner. <laughs> Good morning, how are you? Thank you. Um, I want the ticket for Trambanang and for Rocco. Ratu Bopo? Yes, Ratu Bopo uh, Sorry, I'm uh, tiket Ratu Bopo, not here. Oh. Uh, in Upper Ticket number 8. Ticket number 8. Yeah. Okay. Number eight. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Uh, I'd like the ticket for Trambanang and Rocco. Rato? Rato Bopo, yes. Two tickets. <laughs> Okay, it's a surprise. Surprise, uh, five minutes, five minutes. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, I've got a bike. Can I drive? Yeah. Okay, no Is problem. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a great day. Yeah. Can you arrive as you approach on the right hand side? Yeah, on the right hand side as you walk up is the place for uh, Indonesians and locals to get their tickets. On the left hand side is where foreigners buy their tickets. There is one exception to that. If you want to do what I did and actually buy a ticket that goes to this complex and the Ratu Boko complex. You have to go to window eight on the right Indonesian side and buy your ticket there. Oh, and you pay in rupiah, not in dollars. Even though my ticket is priced in US dollars, you pay in rupiah. Okay, good news. We've now got our tickets. We've managed to go in, we've got our free drink. We can now actually have a look around and we can show you Pram Banan. Now Pram Banan is a Hindu temple complex just 17 kilometers away from Jogjakarta and consists of 240 temples. It's laid out in three, let's call them zones. The outer zone, where there's very little remaining of any original structures, probably acted as a park 
much like it does today, surrounding the main temples where the sort of general public could gather and worship. Then there was a wall, which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore, with four gates which led into the next area, which contains 224 small temples called Pevaras. I think I've said that right. Most are just unfortunately nowadays just a pile of rubble. But slowly restoration is taking place stone by stone to restore as many of these mini temples. It is thought that this area was for people of some sort of importance or standing in either the religious or social community and they were allowed to enter this area and worship amongst these smaller temples. Then we come to the center of the complex, which is the holiest of the three zones, where there are eight shrines or candy. The three main shrines are dedicated to the three gods, Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the keeper, and Shiva, the destroyer. The Shiva temple is the largest structure of Prambanan, and it stands 47 meters tall and 34 meters across the base. The three shrines that stand in front of the three main temples are dedicated to the vehicles of each respective god. The bull or Nandi for Shiva, the sacred swan Hamsa for Brahma, and Vishnu's kite Garuda, Garuda which is the national symbol of Indonesia. The complex was built up over many years by the various rulers of the Mataram dynasty, but sometime in the 10th century, possibly due to a large eruption of the nearby Mount Merapi volcano, the whole area was abandoned as the royal court moved to East Java and the temple complex was abandoned and left to deteriorate. Although the temple itself was no longer a centre of worship, the statues and ruins inspired many stories amongst the locals and folk tales through the next centuries. In the 16th century, a major earthquake rocked the area causing the final collapse of the remaining temples and Prambanang faded into history. Until 1811, when a surveyor sent out by Sir Thomas Raffles, remember the British ruler from Bogor Gardens? This uh, surveyor sent out by him stumbled across the Prambanang ruins by accident while he was in fact searching for Borobudur, the other ruins that we are also going to visit. And while the British started some restoration of Prambanan, their short-lived tenure in the country meant that any restoration then passed back to the Dutch. Unfortunately, they mainly looted the site, carrying off most of the sculptures, while much of the stone was used for construction in the rapidly growing colony. It was only in about 1930 that proper restoration of the site began, and it is still continuing to this day. The main shrines were restored in the 50s, the, one in the ones in the center, but with so much stonework have been removed from the site, it was decided to rebuild the further temples only if 75% of the original stonework was there. So when you'll go around, you'll see the stones have been marked and put in their respective places, and they're slowly restoring one at a time as they can, and leaving the others there, sometimes just a foundation, so you can see where they were. So now we can admire this temple complex today and appreciate the beauty of the inner, inner shrines and the rest we can only leave to our imagination to imagine what it will look like in its glory days.